to dear brother uh, today we are going to study one important uh, subject uh, and uh, the important subject is that uh, jesus christ when he was on earth uh, he had given us uh, two emblems uh, to see uh, two outward emblems uh, to perform as a christian one was of baptism <clears throat> the other is the lord's uh, memorial supper so today we going to see about the lord's memorial supper and uh, probably the next coming class we going to see about the meaning of baptism in the bible so the lord's uh, memorial supper isn't it so the cup uh, and the wine so usually when do we take the cup and the wine do we uh, take it usually when we gather together at church good is it weekly monthly or daily mm, especially in nepal it is practice uh, monthly Mm. but on on our source we practice it daily uh, weekly weekly okay good krishna brother how about you same sir we, we are practicing uh, week monthly okay. once a month okay good so okay today we going to see uh, which is uh, correct because some people uh, do it monthly and some people do it uh, weekly also but in some places they do it daily also now of course uh, all these three you see concepts uh, all these three idea could not could not or could never be correct because either one of them should be correct not the three of them so we are going to see from the bible which is the correct procedure because had <clears throat> not never requested anything to do in his remembrance but he requested only one thing to do in his uh, remembrance <clears throat> and that is Uh, the lord's uh, memorial supper he said do this in the remembrance of me isn't it so this uh, a very important thing so uh, we need to follow it exactly what our lord uh, desired you see just before his death he desired one small request from us so being his faithful followers it is our duty to just uh, follow his uh, instructions and uh, live a life which is uh, pleasing to him so okay about the lord's memorial supper apostle paul gives us a very detailed explanation in first corinthians 11 chapter verses 20 to 30 so we are going to see verse by verse from uh, 11 chapter 22 to 30 uh, okay can uh, somebody read brother verses 20 to 23 hmm. <clears throat> when you come together therefore into one place this is not to eat the lord's supper for in eating every one taken before other his own supper and one is hungry and another is drunken what when it no not houses to eat and to drink in or despise you the source of god and same them that have not what shall i say to you shall i praise you in this i praise you not for i have received of the lord that which also i del- deliver unto you that the lord jesus he the same night in which he was betrayed took bread see so here apostle paul you see uh, writes to the uh, church at corinthians he you see condemns them for uh, not doing the lord's supper in a proper way he says you are eating it as if you are eating uh, your own uh, you see uh, lunch or dinner and in such a way that one comes uh, before another and uh, he eats uh, is it, is it uh, uh, as if uh, he is eating uh, you see a dinner or a lunch as if he is very angry and he drinks uh, as if he is a drunkard therefore you see apostle paul says don't you have any also if you want to eat and drink uh, this is not the place and this is not the custom and this is not the thing that you eat like a, you see uh, your normal uh, you see uh, food uh. so this is a very solemn and very important thing and uh, he next uh, you see he condemns uh, the church for not doing it in a proper way so after saying this one in verse 23 he clearly says now i am going to tell you what uh, the bible actually says and says 
the instruction what next after this one what i'm going to give is not my own <coughs> instructions but these are the instructions which i received from the lord when he says the lord did the same thing huh? when on the night when he was betrayed what did the lord do on the night when he was betrayed let us read verse 24 to 26 brother huh? And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do is do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had suffered, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do you as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me, for as often as you eat this bread. And drink this cup, you do so the Lord's death till he come. See, he said, you see, Lord took the bread. Yeah? Lord Jesus took the bread and broke it and told, This is my body, eat you all of it. And in the same way, he took the cup and uh, he gave the cup and said, This is my blood, so drink you all of it. He also says that uh, as often as you do, it is showing the Lord's death. So what is the purpose of doing the Lord's Supper? This verse clearly says that uh, it is showing the Lord's death till Jesus Christ comes again. So till the second event of Jesus Christ, the church has to do it. And by doing it so, they are showing it that it is the Lord's death that they are remembering. So the church of Corinthians was not doing it in a proper way. Therefore, you see, he corrects the church and he goes on to tell from verse 27 to 31 that if we don't examine, you see, ourselves and do it in a proper way, you shall be just of the Lord. Let us read verse 27 to 31. Where, wherefore ever, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord, Unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he had eaten and drinken unworthily, eaten and drink domination to himself, not discrediting the Lord's body. For his cause may many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. So, here Apostle Paul says uh, that uh, you are drinking unworthily. Therefore, there is a way to drink it uh, worthily or else we will be damned of the Lord. We will we'll be judged, you see, of the Lord. Therefore, it is our duty now to examine which is the proper way to observe this Lord's uh, memorial. Is it uh, correct to do it monthly? Or is it uh, correct to do it weekly? Or is it uh, correct to do it daily? Because all these three things uh, have been done in the churches today. So among this one, of course, there should be only one that is right, uh, not all the three. So which is the correct one? Because unknowingly, without our knowledge, uh, we may be doing it in uh, unworthy manner and it may be uh, not pleasing to the Lord. So it is our duty as a Christian to study this from, from the scriptures. Uh, so first thing is that, uh, you see, Apostle Paul says, uh, the thing uh, which I received was, uh, yeah, I received from the Lord Jesus. And the Lord Jesus actually did the same thing in the night and he was betrayed. So what did the Lord do? We will read it from the Gospel of Luke, 22nd chapter, verses 19 to 22. Uh, Krishna Vadar, you are there? Yes, sir, I am here. Uh, can you read? Is it okay? It, hmm. Yes, sir. Sure, sir. Hmm. I'm going to read from your screen, okay, sir? Okay. No problem. Good. <clears throat> and he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in rem remembrance of me. Likewise, also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. Which is sit for you. Okay. What did the Lord Jesus do? Here, if you see, dear brethren, 
The Lord Jesus actually first took the bread. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples. Next, he took the cup and gave it to his disciples. Now, why did the Lord first give the bread? Then, then, why did he give the wine? What was his purpose? What is the meaning of this one? So, understanding of this meaning is very important. You see, the Lord Jesus gave the bread first. What is the meaning of the bread in the Bible? Jesus said, I am the bread that comes from heaven. And he that eateth me shall never die. He also says that your father said manna. You know, you say in the wilderness, they ate and died, but the flesh which I give, that itself is a bread. And he that eats my flesh shall never die. Read, brother. John 6.51, brother. John 6.51. Can anybody read? Oh. Yes, sir. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any, any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. Mm. And the bread that I will give oh. is my place, wow. which I will give for the life of the world. Okay. He said, the bread which I give is my flesh, which I give it for the life of the whole world. So Jesus actually uh, is saying that uh, when he says the uh, he broke the bread, that means his body was broken for the world. He said, dear brother, remember the class of the ransom? You see, no. we all know through Adam, what happened? Uh, the sin came upon the whole world. And through second Adam, the Jesus coming and dying on the cross, uh, breaking himself, uh, you see, breaking uh, his body as a bread. Uh, he gave his life for the whole world, so the whole world might be saved. Uh, therefore, the bread uh, here represents the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, uh, the life of Jesus Christ, the body of Jesus Christ, which he offered for the you see, salvation of the whole world. And uh, through the death of uh, Jesus Christ, what did we get? Uh, we were justified before God. You said, we were all sinners in the sight of God. But after Jesus dying for us, we are all considered as, you see, sinless person in the God, sight of God. This is the meaning of justification. We are all justified by faith. Let us read Romans 5 1 and Romans 8 1, brother. Mm. Mm. Mosam, brother, can you read? Yes, okay, brother. Mm. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we continue with uh, uh, next Rome verse. Eight. Romans 8 1. Mm. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. See? We are justified by faith. Uh, and therefore, we have peace with uh, God. It seems. That means we were all sinners, isolated from God. Uh, you see, cast away from God. But because of uh, the blood of Jesus, the death of Jesus, we have access to God's grace. Uh, therefore, there is no condemnation. Therefore, dear brother, and we are seen in the class of the church, you see, the whole world is in this plane. But because of the faith and Jesus and his blood, we are transferred on this plane, the plane of justification, where God considers us that we are no more sinners. Therefore, this uh, body of Jesus, which is sacrificed for the whole world, through which, uh, you see, we have got justification and forgiveness of our sins. The next, what did our Lord do? He likewise took the cup. He said, you see, this is my blood shed for you. Now, what is the meaning of blood in the Bible? You see, can anybody tell me what is the meaning of blood in the Bible? Hmm? Okay, you see, in Genesis, the first time you see the blood uh, comes in the Bible. There, God commanded that you shall never eat the flesh with the blood of it. Because in the, you see, blood, there is life. Genesis 9 4, Buddha. Huh? Genesis 9, chapter 4, verse. Huh? But flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall you not eat. See? So, life is in the blood. Blood is the life thereof. Therefore, you should never eat blood. That's what God said. So, 
this blood means actually what in the bible the life the life of jesus christ so what is the life of jesus christ huh? let us read john 6 chapter 53 to 56 brother huh? can everybody read hmm. then jesus said unto them verily verily i say unto you expect you eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood you have no life in you whoso eaten my flesh and drink my blood has internal life and i will raise him up and at the last day for my flesh is meat indeed and my blood is drink indeed he that eat my flesh and drink my blood dwell in me and i in him what did Jesus say? Huh? The blood, uh, he that drinketh my blood, uh, you see, has life. And he that doesn't drink my blood, he has no life. Uh. So what is the meaning of uh, drinking this blood? Uh? You see, many of the disciples thought that Jesus was literally telling to eat his flesh, literally telling to eat uh, his flesh and drink his blood. Uh. Now what is the meaning of this one? Is it literally eating and drinking? No, dear brethren, we have that really understanding from the scriptures that Jesus never tend to eat literally his body or drink literally his blood. So, eating his body means what? And eating his bread means what? The flesh means what? And drinking his blood means what? This is not a literal meaning, dear brethren. This means assimilating understanding grasping you see uh, you see these two characters of uh, jesus uh, the flesh uh, the life of jesus uh, and the blood uh, you see the brethren. therefore many people misunderstood and many people went away from jesus verse 66 brother uh, verse 66 from that time many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him Mm, no more with him because they thought this to be a literal thing because cannibalism was banned in Israel it was an abomination to the sight of God this was like violating the law of God therefore many people left Jesus uh, you see and isolated him but uh, if they would have asked Jesus he would have really given the explanation so here actually the blood means the life of Jesus uh, so what was the life of Jesus how was the life of Jesus if you see his life uh, was not a selfish life. His life was a selfless life. It was a life of sacrifice, which was very much pleasing to God. Let us read Ephesians 5 2, brother. Krishna, brother, can you read Ephesians 5 2? Sure, sir. And walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a Sweet smelling sever. See? He had given himself uh, as an offering and a sacrifice to God, uh, which is a sweet smelling uh, savor. Uh, this is the sacrifice. This is the life of Christ. Uh, Jesus Christ, uh, he lived on this earth like a self sacrificial life, uh, which was very pleasing to God. This is the life. This is the blood of Christ. Uh, so, uh, drinking the blood of Christ means what? Uh, Walking in his footsteps. Uh, what did Apostle Paul say to us? Uh, huh? In Romans 12, 1. We studied this one in the uh, subject of church. No? I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. That means even as you're living in this earth, uh, try to live a sacrificial life uh, which is holy and which is pleasing to acceptable to God. Therefore, this is what Jesus did, dear brethren. So we are following the first step of Jesus means. Uh, we need to do the same thing. This is the meaning of blood in the Bible. You see, yeah, if uh, uh, there is any person who is very expert in botany uh, or any science subject and all, uh, what do we call them? Uh, you, we usually tell, no, oh, yo, this person has uh, uh, drunk uh, all uh, botany subjects. What do you mean by that one? You see, it doesn't mean that a uh, literal uh, drinking of the subjects. Uh, that means... Uh, grasping, understanding, you see, accumulating that understanding within himself. This is the real meaning. This is what Jesus said also. 
eat my bread and drink my blood this is not a literal meaning at all therefore you see this can be really clearly understood in the answer which jesus gave to uh, uh, the uh, two disciples mother uh, the mother of james and john you see mother of james and john came and approached jesus saying lord uh, i have a request please grant my two sons to sit on the left hand and one on the right hand in thy kingdom now what did jesus say read brother matthew chapter 20 verse 21 22 brother uh, most of brother can you read mm. yes. yeah it's okay brother and he said unto her what will thou she said unto him grant that these my two son and sit the one on the right hand and the other to the left in the kingdom but jesus answered and said you know not what you ask and you able to drink of the cup that i shall drink of and to be baptized with the baptism that i am baptized with they shall they say unto him we are able you see what did you say are you able to drink of the same cup which uh, i drank of what is this cup uh, you see on the day of the last uh, supper Jesus drank of the same cup and gave to the disciples. They also drank of the same cup. Now, no, what Jesus is telling? Is he speaking of the literal cup? Did he say that uh, what cup I am drinking? Can you drink it or not? It's not the literal cup, dear brother. He said the experience, the sufferings, the life which I am experiencing now, which I am now living, are you able to do the same thing? Can you experience the same thing? Can you drink of the same experience which I am undergoing? This was the real meaning actually what Jesus said to his disciples. Therefore, you see, remember when the soldiers came to arrest Jesus. That time, what did Peter do? Peter immediately took a knife and cut off the, you see, a high priest servant's ear. What did Jesus say immediately? Peter, put the sword inside. Shall I not drink the cup which my father has put unto me? Read John 18, 11, brother. Krishna, brother, read John 18, 11. <clears throat> then said Jesus unto Peter, Put up thy sword into the set, and cup, the cup which my father hath given me, shall I not drink it? Shall I not drink it? Was he speaking about a little cup? Did he have any cup in his hand? No. What is the meaning of cup? The experience. You see, the life uh, which Jesus was leading, which was Jesus was about to experience, he said, shall I not drink it? Uh, this is the meaning of cup in the Bible. Therefore, what did Jesus pay in uh, Garden of Gethsemane? He prayed to the Lord, no? Uh, he prayed to the Heavenly Father. What did he say? Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass away from me. Correct, no? Read Matthew 26, 39, brother. Matthew 26, 39. Uh, read more some and he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed saying oh my father if it is possible if it be possible let this cup pass from me nevertheless not as i will as i will but as though will okay. uh, not my will but thy will what did jesus pray that the cup may pass from me what is this cup did he have any cup in the garden of Gethsemane? A cup of experience. You see, that experiences. That's what he requested uh, the Lord to take it away from him. But not my will, but uh, your will. This is the life of Jesus, dear brethren. This is the meaning of cup. Therefore, why did Jesus uh, first give the bread? You see, because from the bread, we are justified. From sinners to a holy person. You see, we are all sinners in the God's uh, sight of God. But how, how are we cleansed, uh, purified? It is only by the, you see, Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. By his body, which he gave us a ransom. We are justified. And as soon as we are justified, as soon as our sins are forgiven, the next step, what do we need to do? We need to take the cup also, only eating the bread is not sufficient now. Now, immediately, the next second thing Jesus gave was 
drink this sir uh, eh? wine drink you all of it don't waste it anything that means after accepting jesus as a savior we immediately need to partake in his sufferings you see have fellowship with his sufferings also you see that is the life of jesus this is the meaning of first taking the bread and second taking the wine that means receiving justification and after receiving justification to you see suffer uh, same things for christ this is the condition of the gospel if anybody wants to believe in jesus now and follow his footstep this is the primary condition this one we have seen in much elaborate way in a class of the church you see not to believe in jesus uh, are called as uh, you see Uh, disciples of jesus but the followers of jesus are called the disciples we seen that uh, those followers are 144000 also okay let us read that philippians 129 brother philippians 129 anybody who can uh, open the bible read okay. you can read i will read hmm. for unto you it is given in the behalf of christ not only to believe on him but also to suffer for his sake okay not only to believe this is the condition this is not only just believing and going and enjoying in the world no but also to suffer for Christ's sake dear brethren so these two things you see ha huh? we need to keep it in mind believing in jesus after believing in jesus suffering for christ is also very important therefore what did apostle paul say he said i rejoice in my suffering for christ's sake so that whatever is left of behind of the sufferings of christ i may it You see, suffer it for the body of Christ. Read with us. Colossians one twenty four. Colossians one twenty four. Hmm. Who now rejoices in my suffering for you, and fill up that which is behind of the affections of Christ in my flesh for His body's sake, which is the source. See, I rejoice, which is the suffering for you. You see, and fill up the cup is filled up. You say, dear brethren, what did Jesus say? Say, drink you all of it. Uh, some part of the sufferings of Christ, Apostle Paul rejoiced to experience it. And we have got little bit of here and there and all. God has given us also a little bit. What do we need to do? We need to experience it, dear brethren. Enjoy it. Rejoice it. This is the condition. But today, you see, many people think that uh, partaking of this. Uh, A communion is for forgiveness of sins. Ah, uh, correct, na? Ah, uh, if you don't take, uh, the sins are not forgiven. So just like that only, you still condemned. So by taking this uh, communion every month uh, or every day or every week, uh, we became cleansed uh, again. We become holy. Dear brethren, ah, uh, how is the uh, sins cleansed? Ah, uh? not by you see partaking of anything. Ah. Uh, But by the blood of Jesus Christ, isn't it? Let us read few verses, brother. Hebrews seven twenty seven and First John one seven, brother. Huh? Who need need not not daily as though those high priests to offer up sacrifice first for his own sins and then for the people's for his for this he did once when he offered. up himself see this he did once for all no need to repeat this sir. you see ha huh? this again and again no 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 this was repeated in the tabernacle ha huh? when every day sacrifice was given but once jesus died it is end of all the sacrifice no need to repeat anything again and again read brother first john 17 brother ha huh? but if we walk in the light as he is in the light we have fellowship on with another one with another and the blood of jesus christ his son cleanses us from all sin see? the blood of jesus cleanses us from all sin it is the blood of jesus so many people say brother correct that is the blood of jesus only cleanses but that is only for the past sin before accepting jesus christ as a savior but for the sins which we have committed after accepting christ christ has to die again so he doesn't come literally to die again so instead of uh, making jesus to die we are breaking the bread and uh, drinking the cup 
and showing that uh, the Lord is dying again. He's showing the death of Jesus Christ and through the death, he is dying for our sins again and again, again and again. And doing this one, we are cleansing our sins slowly. Many people think that, dear brethren, dear brethren, eh? you see, what did we just read? Uh, Hebrews 7.27. Uh, like the high priest, it is not necessary for Jesus to do it uh, daily. Read that verse again, brother. Hebrews 7.27, 7, brother. Read it again. Hmm. Who needed not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice first See? for his own sins hmm. and then for the people. peoples. Hmm. For this he did once. once. Hmm. So once is sufficient. So no need for us to repeat it again in various ways. Uh, isn't it? Either way, anything. Uh, dear brother, it is not at all necessary. Therefore, many misuse the term Saying, uh, brother, no, it's given no? in First Corinthians 11, 26. Uh, but as often as you do, you show the Lord's death. We'll see what's the real meaning of this. This is not the meaning of uh, that, uh, you see, by breaking the bread and uh, drinking the wine, uh, you see, that is significance of the, you see, that showing that the Lord is dying for us again and again. Therefore, that's what Apostle Paul is trying to correct the Corinthian church. Isn't it? In First Corinthians 11, chapter, it says, do it in a proper way or else you will be condemned. Therefore, which is correct? Monthly, weekly or daily? If you see, none of these things are correct. How? Then which is correct, brother? You might wonder. Okay. Let me ask a question. Now, what did our Lord do? Huh? You see, that uh, uh, breaking of the uh, bread and uh, taking of the wine is called as the Lord's Memorial Supper. Correct, no, brother? In English, it is called the Lord's Memorial Supper, no? Yes, brother. Okay. What about Nepal? In Nepal, what is it called as? Mm, uh, Lord's uh, Supper. Uh, Nepali language, you tell me. Prabhu Boj. Prabhu Boj. Prabhu Boj. Very good. Prabhu Boj. Uh, okay. Now, let us understand this meaning word. See, Lord means what? Prabhu means what? Jesus. Lord. Correct. Okay, na? good. Siri. Eh? Supper means what? Boj means what? What time? Boj means uh, lunch, dinner. Lunch or dinner? Correct. Tell me. There is difference between uh, lunch or dinner or not? Is supper means... Uh, I think it's... Uh, not lunch or... Uh, not dinner, it is like uh, IT. Uh, uh, it is like um, party. <laughs> good. Okay, let us see here. Very good. Very good. Very good. See, we'll see here. See, supper means what you know. Is it morning? No. Mm, no. No. Good. Is it in a midnight? No. Late night? No. You mm. know what is the meaning of supper? You see? The supper means something between 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. That is called a supper. Okay. Oh. Let me explain to you. Let me explain to you. See, morning, what do we eat early in the morning? Breakfast. Okay, breakfast. Correct. Now, why it is called as breakfast, we'll see in the last. So, it is a breakfast. Okay. Now, afternoon, comes. Now, afternoon what do we eat? We eat lunch. Lunch, lunch or dinner? Morning. Morning, lunch. 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 Afternoon is called as lunch. Very good. So, in the night, what we eat, it is called as dinner. dinner. Uh, very good. Okay. Now, dinner we eat around 8 p.m., 9 p.m., 10 p.m., we close it off. Now, again, when we when do we eat? In the morning, 9 o'clock only. There is a huge gap of 10 to 11 hours. And that uh, 10 to 11 hours period is like a fasting period. Hence, breakfast, what we eat early in the morning, is breaking the fast, which we had it in the night. Okay, that is the reason it's called as breakfast. Okay. What is this supper? This supper is neither lunch, neither dinner. It is something what we have between after sunset. Something between 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. See, if you're, if you're staying abroad, 
in uh, European continents or in America and all, they usually they have supper. They don't have dinner, you know. They finish it off everything by 6 p.m., 7 p.m., 8 p.m. and finish it off. After that one, they don't have any dinner at all. Okay. Now, you tell me, now, Lord's supper means what time it should be taken? It should be taken in the morning or uh, in the night? It will be taken uh, between 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Very good. <laughs> of the word supper. Is it given in the Bible? Yes, it is given in the Bible. Let us read 1 Corinthians 11.23 and Luke 22.20 with her. Uh. For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. Uh, same night. Eh? Isn't it? He was bitter in the night, no? Eh? So, uh, yes. before that only, he took the bread. Now, read Luke 22, 20. When is, when is that exact time? Hmm. Do 22-20. Likewise, also the cup after supper, mm. saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is set for you. See? Likewise, the cup after supper, dear brethren. So, Jesus actually celebrated supper. Now, supper means what time should we celebrate? You tell me. Now, today, in which church they do at this time? They do it in uh, evening or morning? Afternoon. <laughs> Afternoon. Oh. So, you can balance whichever way you want. <laughs> Which is the proper way as per the Bible. We should do it in the, uh, between the supper time or in the morning or afternoon. It's proper time is uh, evening. Evening. That's what the Bible says. See, Jesus uh, and Apostle Paul is correcting the Church of Corinthians because they are not doing it in a proper way. That's what he's telling him. What? You don't have any home to eat and drink? If you want to eat and drink it in whichever way, in whichever time you want to do, please do it in your home. But this is not the lunch. Kindly understand, this is not the lunch. This is the Lord's Supper. This is your dream among his death. So, do it in a very solemn manner. That's what Apostle Paul is saying. We'll see. Okay, we'll show it to your proof also. Many verses are there in the Bible. But, uh, some people, you see, they claim that uh, there are other verses to prove that uh, it is to be taken daily, monthly. Let us consider now those few verses. Okay? Acts 2.42, brother. And Acts 2.46 and Acts 20, verse 7. Hmm. You can read from the screen. Anybody can read. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowships and in breaking of bread and in prayers. They uh, spent, uh, you see, how? Breaking of bread and in prayer. Brother is given now. Uh, they broke the bread in prayer and all. So, they did it. Uh, and continue, verse 46. Uh. And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meal, meat with gladness and singleness of heart. See, brother is clearly given now, continuing daily in the temple, breaking the bread. So, brother, is clearly given, brother, that we can do it daily. Eh? Read Acts 20, verse 7. Mm. And on to the first day of the week, when the disciples come together to bread, break bread, Powell priests unto them, ready to depart on the morrow and continue his speech until midnight. Okay. When did they break the bread? First day of the week. So, based on these scriptures only, many people do it every weekly once. Some people do it daily. And some people do it monthly once also. Okay? Now, what is this scriptures speaking about Dear brethren, we need to, you see, study those scriptures. Sir. See, these, all these days, sir, we have taken the studies, sir. but how have we taken the studies? Sir? You see, we never taken the studies just like that, dear brethren. We have studied 
the verses. Uh, a lot of difference between reading the verses and studying the verses. That means we have taken all the verses and come to a clear conclusion. If you clearly observe these verses, it is speaking only about bread, bread, bread. Is there any one word that is mentioned about wine? No. Why it is not mentioned? Then actually, why it is not mentioned? Then what is actually this verse is speaking? If you see, these verses are speaking about the regular meal in Israel. I shall very clearly prove it to you from the scriptures very shortly. Okay? See, this is speaking about the regular meal. And how the people of Israel used to have their meal. It is like this only. They used to sit all around a table or on the floor. And there used to be a big uh, plate, uh, you see, before uh, everybody. And the elder of the house, you see, he was supposed to pray for the meal. And after praying for the meal, they used to break the bread and give it to everybody. This was the custom in Israel. And this is what Jesus did. You see, when he fed the 4,000 people and the 5,000 people, what did Jesus do? He prayed to the Lord, break the bread and give it to everybody. Now, was uh, giving the bread to 4,000, 5,000, was it the communion? No. It was just giving the bread. There the wine is never mentioned in the Bible. Similarly, this incident also is speaking about the regular meal in Israel. There is one more incident also. Why they used to offer, why they used to do it weekly once. If it is regular meal, they could have done it daily. Okay. And what about the scripture which speaks about on the first day of the week? They gathered for the breaking of the bread. You see? In uh, mm -hmm. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20, verse 7. Now, why did they do it uh, uh, weekly once? They could do it every day, no? Why they did it uh, weekly once? You see, when did they do it? Uh, in Acts 27, it says, in the first day of the week. Did you observe it? Acts 20, verse 7. Read with it. Acts yes. 20, verse 7. Mm. Yes. Did you observe it? Uh? Acts 20, verse 7. Can somebody just refer in the Bible? Yeah, okay. Okay, brother, I'm just. Acts 20, verse 7. Hmm. And upon the first day of the week, ah, when okay. the disciples come together to break bread, Good. Paul preached unto them and ready to depart on the morrow okay. and continued his speech until midnight. Thank you. Thank you, brother. So, now why did they gather on the first day of the week? Let us see. What actually happened in the first day of the week? You see, first day of the week, who was resurrected? When was Jesus resurrected? On first early yeah. morning, Sunday. Sunday, ah, okay. See, Luke 24. Luke 24, 1. Hmm. Luke 24, 1. Okay, brother. So, should I read it, brother? Ah, read from the Bible. Read, read. Ah. Now, upon the first day of the week, ah, okay. very early ah. in the morning. Early in the morning, they came to the sepulchre. Correct? Now, check. Yes, okay. brother. Now, read verse 13, brother. Hmm. And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus. See? Which the was same day. From okay. Thank you. Yes. So, same day, two people are going to Imamo. Same day, underline. Now, these two people, actually, one is Peter. Okay? Now, as yeah. they were going, what happened suddenly? Jesus joined them. Okay? You read the, the one in uh, uh, verse uh, 15 uh, and 16. Hmm. And it come to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself draw near and went with them, but their eyes were held on that they should not know him. Ah, see, Jesus joined them. And Jesus began to discuss, why, what happened, why are you all so dull, why, what is this discussion you are going on? Then they began to explain, oh, yo, we all trusted Jesus that he is going to save us and save Israel, re-establish the kingdom in Israel. All these things are given from verses 15 to verse 33. You kindly read it. Okay, afterwards, we'll just read only a few verses. Okay, then what happened? Then Jesus corrects them. 
and begins to speak about himself from the scriptures and tells them clearly what does the Bible say about himself. Read verse 25, 26, brother, uh, and 27. Read first. Same chapter. Then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe that all the prophet, prophets have spoken, out not Christ to have suffered this day, these things, and to enter into his glory. Hmm. And hmm. beginning at Moses, no, I think to 26. No, no, correct. Read, read, read. read. And yeah. beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scripture the things concerning himself. Himself. You see, even then nobody understood that this was Jesus. Then suddenly what happened? You see? And the place came, it was almost night, and disciples told, ah, Sir, please don't go far, please come and stay with us. After much compulsion, Jesus entered ah, with them to a inn for what? For dinner. Then what happened? Ah, Jesus took the bread and prayed. Read verse 30 and 31. Mm. And it came to pass. As he said, at meet with them, he took bread and blessed it and break and gave to them. And their eyes were upon and they knew him, knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. He vanished out of their sight. Now, how did Jesus reveal himself to the disciples? How did they recognize that this was Jesus? In what way? See, uh, they could not see Jesus. That means they saw, but they could not recognize that he was Jesus. So he was not like Jesus to look at. And the way he spoke also, it was totally different. Nobody could identify that this was Jesus. And how did they identify Jesus? Think. Very easy. It is given there only. It is given in verse 30 only. Krishna, but the rivers are think. It is given in verse 30. Tell me, how did they recognize Jesus? Verse 30, and it came to pass as he said, they had met with them. He took bread and blessed it and broke That's and it. Gave yeah, to that them. is There is the answer. You tell me. This remind this this breaking bread is reminding them that last supper. How? How did they? Reminding last because supper. Same thing Jesus um, huh? did no, here, same thing. Here did Jesus give the wine? Huh? You know, how did they recognize that? You see, Jesus had a common way of taking the bread, praying to the Lord, and breaking it and giving it. You see, he had a style. 4,000 people feeding, 5,000 people feeding. Huh? Every day for the meal, who is to pray? Jesus himself is to pray because he was the elderly person among all the disciples. Correct or not? Huh? Yes. Yes, and he had a particular style. In the same way when Jesus prayed and you see, broke the bread immediately, what happened? The disciples understood that this is our Lord Jesus. And when was this one? When did it happen? This happened first. first day of the week. Very good. Now you tell me, which is the first day of the week? So we have seven days in the week, no? Correct, no? Sunday. Uh, very good. Sunday is the first day of the week for us now. But for Israel... You know, which was the first day of the week? Which was the last day of the week for, for uh, Jewish people? Uh, I think uh, last day is Friday. <laughs> that is for <laughs> us. You see, now weekend means what? Friday, Saturday, Sunday. But actually for the Jewish people, the Sabbath day was a Saturday. Okay? And the first yeah. day of the week was actually a Sunday. You see? Now today, what has happened? This, this custom changed. How did it change? This is the reason they changed in Luke 24 chapter. You see, what uh, used to happen was that Jesus was resurrected on the Sunday. Okay? So, he appeared 11 times to the disciples on the Sunday. And one of the way he revealed to the disciples was breaking the bread. So, in the remembrance of Jesus' resurrection, 
the disciples used to gather on the first day of the week. And when was the first, when was the first day of the week for the Jewish people? Sunday. Very good. It was a Sunday. Therefore, in uh, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20, verse 7, it is speaking about the general gathering and the general breaking of the bed for the remembrance of Jesus' resurrection and not of his death. There's no wine mentioned there. Therefore, since then, what happened? Actually, the Jewish people were gathering on every Saturday in the temple to read the word of God. But as Jesus was resurrected on a Sunday, for remembrance of his resurrection, that is a very blessed thing, the people of Christians, you see, they used to gather every Sunday. And this is how the whole world, what happened? Sunday became a holiday. Why? The whole world, majority of them got converted to Christianity. You see? And then what happened? So Sunday, everybody began to take leave. So the emperor, what did he do? The Roman emperor, he declared Sunday to be a holiday. Why? For Christians to go to the church and worship the Lord. And it is in this memory only, they used to gather weekly to break only the bread, not the wine. Why? To show the remembrance of the Lord's resurrection, dear brethren. Okay. Now, then what is the meaning of Luke 2, 42 and 46? See, Luke 20, verse 7, we saw. That is not at all speaking about the, you see, bread and wine, but that is speaking about the remembrance of the Lord's resurrection. Okay, now. So, what is this uh, breaking bread daily in Luke uh, 2, 42 and 46? The answer is given in verse 46 itself. Let us read that uh, Verse, brother. Look, two, sorry, Acts 2.46, brother. Acts 2.46. Read the answer is given in Acts 2.46. Can you And they're continuing. Yes, brother. Yeah, you continue. Hmm. Read it. Please read. Acts 2.46. And they're continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. Okay. They break the bread where? House. House. House to house. And what did they do? Uh, meat with gladness yeah. and eat their eat singleness. Uh, that means eat their means what? This is their lunch. This is their dinner. What they had? This is God. Nothing. To do with the Lord's Supper at all. So, taking the Lord's Supper, you see, weekly or uh, doing it, uh, you see, daily is very unscriptural because in all this incident, it is speaking about the natural lunch or dinner of the Jewish custom. And uh, here, the wine itself is never mentioned at all. Therefore, Partaking of the Lord's Supper, actually the meaning is that we are remembering his death, not his resurrection. Understood? So you tell me, when do we observe a person's death? We have, you see, death anniversary, you know? Huh? Mahatma Gandhi, Ambedkar, Jawaharlal Nehru, so many people are there, you no? Know? Great Kate, uh, freedom fighters, huh? death anniversary. You also have so many family members who are passed away. Now, when do you remember their death? You tell me. On their dead day. How many times in a day? How many times in a week? How many times in a month? Once a year. Once a year. Yeah. Is it monthly? Is it weekly? Is it daily? If you say, no. It is yearly once. Of course, we remember every day. But how do we, when do we specially remember them? We specially remember them only yearly once. So this death of our Lord should be observed in a proper way only when, only once a year and not every week, neither every day. Okay, mm -hmm. brother, is there a Bible verse for it? Yes, there is a lot of scriptures. I'll show it to you. Let us read Luke 18.32. Read all these verses one by one. Can, can somebody read it? Both of you can share these verses and read it. Brother. Ah. 
one by one read. Huh? Krishna Buddha, you are there? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. read, read. read. <coughs> Uh, uh, June, June 1832, that the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled, which he spoke, speak, signifying what death he should die. Okay. It is speaking about the Lord's death, about what type of death that uh, he, see, he should die. So, this is speaking about the Jesus Christ's death, isn't it? Huh? Now, uh, one more thing. Uh, read verse 28, brother. In John 18, 28, brother. Uh, hmm. John 18, 28, brother. Uh, on the Bible. John 18, 28. Uh, brother. Uh. Then let the Jesus from Caiaphas unto that hell, hell of judgment, and it was clear early and they themselves went not into the judgment hall lest they should be defiled but that they might eat the Passover. Mm, why? That they might eat the Passover. You see? That means when was the day that Jesus died on the cross? What was the uh, you see, uh, function? What was the festival in uh, Israel? Which festival? Passover. Passover. You, know, you tell me. Passover comes uh, weekly once or monthly once? Yearly. Yearly. So, this was the Lord's Passover. Jesus died on the cross on the day of the Passover. Read Luke 22, 7, 8 and 13. Sir. You can read from the screen. Then he then came the day of unleavened bread when the Passover must be killed hmm. and he sent Peter and John saying, Go and prepare us the Passover. That prepare we us may the proper eat. Passover that we may eat. Uh, continue. And they went and found as uh, he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. They made ready the Passover. Jesus ate <laughs> the Passover. He celebrated a new Passover, a new thing. So, <laughs> Original Passover, <laughs> so, kill the lamb, you see, and uh, they used to sprinkle the blood and all. But here, Jesus gave a new type of Passover, breaking the bread, drinking of the wine. Read, uh, look 22 15, brother. Same, same chapter, verse 15, brother. Huh? Hmm. Most of the reader. Luke 22 15. Hmm. Yeah, okay, brother. Mm. And he said unto them, With desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. See? Eat this Passover. So, Jesus actually, he conducted the Lord's Supper, means the other name for the Lord's Supper was the Passover. Now, you tell me, Passover comes yearly once. Or monthly ones or daily ones? Yearly ones. This is the Passover. Now, how many times should we celebrate this Passover? Is it daily, monthly or when? Yearly. Yearly only. Yeah, see, I am showing you from the scriptures only. Read First Corinthians 5-7 also. 1 Corinthians 5-7. Pours out therefore the world Live on that you may be a new lump as you are unleavened, for even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Ah, see, Christ our sacrifice, a Passover sacrificed. Uh, so, when should we celebrate it? Uh, only yearly ones. Not it? On, yeah. Now, let us see. Yearly months month means which month we should celebrate. Right now, now we have seen that uh, not doing it daily, not doing it monthly or weekly, then actually we should do it yearly as per the Bible. Okay. Now, which month we should do in a year? That is also should be huh, from the scriptures. No? Huh? Now, you tell me. Huh, I think on Easter Sunday. Easter Sunday. Ah, okay. Let us see. Huh? Now, 
which is the beginning of uh, the month, beginning of the year for a Jewish January. people? January. January, very good. You see, January. Eh? Correct, no? Read yeah. from the Bible, which is the beginning of the month. January is in our calendar. Let us see from the biblical calendar. Exodus 12, 2, brother. Krishna, brother, you are there? You are listening? Yes, sir. Hmm. Exodus 12, 2. Yeah, I am going to read from his script. Hmm. Uh, this month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Okay. Exodus 13, 4. Hmm. This day came you unto in the month of Abib. Abib. Now, what is the meaning of month Abib? Which is this month Abib? You have Nepali Bible with you, brother? Yes, brother. Yes, I have. Uh, read Exodus 13, 4. You read in Nepali Bible. Exodus 13. 4. 13, 4. Okay. Uh, Abib. Uh, here also it comes Abib. You go and search in the Google which is the month of Abib, you know? Huh? Month of Abib means it is not January. You know, which is it? Uh? It is the month of April. Hmm? Chitra Masa. Uh, uh, in uh, Hindi, is there any Chaitra Mas? Yes, in Nepal. Uh, in Nepal, Chaitra. is there? Uh, Chaitra Mas. Chaitra Mas yes. means in the month of April. Okay? You can search it in the Google or any search in any other language Bible. We'll come to know. Okay? So, the beginning of the month, uh, sorry, sorry, beginning of the year was actually April. That is a biblical calendar. Okay? Now, mm -hmm. how did it come to January? Actually, even today also, in the whole world, which is the beginning of the financial year as per accounts? So, I think Nepali also practicing the April. Correct. <laughs> Not only Nepal, but the whole world. I am telling the whole world, you see the accounts, it begins from April to March only. That was actually mm -hmm. the original New Year. And how did yes, it come yes. to January? You know, how did it come? Actually, the Jewish people, that same custom was followed by the entire world. But when the Jewish people were taken captivity by the Roman people, the Jewish people never changed their God. They began to worship their own God wherever they went. So the Roman emperor became very wild. And his name was Generosus. So whatever you tell to the Jewish people, they should never listen. So what did he do? In uh, that uh, rage and anger, he shifted the beginning of the year from <coughs> April to January. Why January? He could have shifted to any other month. No? His name was Generosus. So much similar to his name, was January. Therefore, he shifted the, you see, <clears throat> uh, the beginning of the year to January. So, even after shifting also, the Jewish people never changed their month. Then, they used to call them as April Fools. This is how April Fool concept came into the world. Okay? So, this was inaugurated and, you see, and brought into practice by the Roman Emperor Generous. So, but still also you can see the whole world in the financial market, in accounts and everything and all, they still follow the month of April. Even in Karnataka also, you see the, uh, you see the religious festival, what you say in the uh, local, uh, you see, uh, customs and all, it becomes only in the April, the harvest festival. Okay. So this is uh, as per the Bible. So why I'm telling you is that the Passover actually begins in the month of April. Jesus died on the cross. You see, huh? on the month of April itself. Huh? And uh, he died as a Passover lamb. Now, how was the Passover lamb to be taken? Huh? You, you read all the things from the book of Exodus 12 chapter. Huh? We'll just see only a few verses. Huh? So there, mm -hmm. the lamb was supposed to be taken inside the house on the 10th day of the month. And to be kept inside the house until the 14th day of the month. And to be killed in the evening. Okay? Now let us read that verse, sir. Exodus 12, 6, brother. Exodus 12, 6, read, brother, please. And you shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the 
congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Hmm. Shall kill it in the evening. Therefore, Jesus celebrated in the evening, not in the morning. Okay? So, exactly this was fulfilled. Jesus entered Jerusalem six days before the Passover, as per Luke 12, 1. So, Passover was 14th. Six days before means, see the chart here. Ninth day. He entered where? He entered the house of Lazarus. The next day, he came to Jerusalem on a sitting on a donkey. And that was the tenth day. Luke 12, 12. Okay. So, this was the exact fulfillment of the prophecy. Now, there what was supposed to happen? The <clears> lamb <throat> was to be taken. It was the first year without blemish. Correct now? Exodus yeah. 12, 5. So, similarly, Je did Jesus have any sin? No. No. He was a perfect man. He was sinless, separate from sinners. Hebrews 7.26. So, exactly <laughs> the Lamb of God. <laughs> then, there, you see, the blood was taken and the blood was sprinkled on the house post. Huh? Similarly, the blood of Jesus. Sir. Where do we need to apply? On our heart's door. Correct now? We need to accept Jesus or not? Yes. Yes, that's what he signifies. Exodus 12, 7, Exodus 12, 13, Revelation 3, 20, and uh, Galatians uh, 6, 10. Okay? Then, you see, that night, what is to happen? The angel of death is to pass over it. Uh, who was in danger of death? The firstborns. Only those people were in danger of death. So similarly, who is the first one now? The church. Church. Yes. The church are the first ones. Hebrews 12, 23. They are in danger of death. So, if we need to escape from death, we need to be under this shelter. And next, they were supposed to uh, burn the lamb. Not cut the lamb into pieces. Not a broke bone was supposed to be broken. Therefore, Jesus died on the cross. Not even one bone was broken. Okay, then in the night they have to eat the lamb. How? Roasted with bitter herbs. Read Exodus 12 8. Brother. Exodus 12 8. Mm. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread with their bitter herbs that they shall eat it. It was supposed to be eaten in the night, not in the morning. So, you can't take the memorial in the morning. Huh? Only in the supper time. How did they eat it? With bitter herbs. That means the bitter experiences in our life. That brings us to Christ. That brings us near to Christ. You see? And next, how they were supposed to eat? With their huh? shoe cleanly tied. With their clothes put on. With a uh, rod in their hand. As if they are ready for a journey. Exodus 12, 11, brother. Huh? And those shall you eat it with your loins, gridded your shoes on your feet, and your stuff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's mm, Passover. Passover. You shall eat it very fast, as if you are going for a journey. Similarly, we are going for a journey of Kana, heavenly Kana. No? How should we be? In Ephesians 6, 14, 15, it says, no, the breastplate of righteousness, uh, you see, and uh, your feet uh, put on with a uh, gospel of uh, peace, put on the shoes of gospel of peace, uh, put, uh, the, take the Lord's staff. Uh, all these things, uh, we should uh, be prepared and eat the Lord's uh, supper. Uh, you see, dear brethren, uh, Therefore, the Jesus, the day he died was Friday. And he was resurrected on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. Now you tell me, every year does it come on the Friday? I think it's not. <laughs> Very good. But generally, see, you, you, if you are born on Friday, the next year it comes to Saturday or Sunday. It doesn't um, come yeah. every day on Friday. But now today, what mm, happens? See, Christians... I have done a very wrong thing in changing the Bible. They have given importance to Good Friday than to the proper time of observation of the Lord's death. 
doing it yearly once. Instead of doing it, they are doing Good Friday as a celebration. Even Good Friday is also not uh, as per the scriptures, dear brethren. Therefore, this exactly comes on Nisan 14th. Nisan 14th is the Passover. So Jesus partook this memorial one day before, and that is Nisan 13th. So we need to celebrate this Passover on Nisan 13th yearly once. And at that word, what time? That to <coughs> at the sundown. After the sunset, we need to, you see, celebrate this uh, uh, Lord's Supper. After uh, sunset, before 12 or before 8? Uh, after 6 p.m., before 8 p.m. or 8.30 p.m. So that okay. is the time. Between the uh, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m., that's what the time that we need to celebrate. That's the time actually Jesus was arrested after 9 p.m. and he was taken from Garden of Gethsemane. See, after having his, his supper, he went to the Garden of Gethsemane. He was praying to the Lord. So it was almost night at almost 8.30, 9 o'clock. So it is at that time that we need to take. Therefore, Apostle Paul, you see, clearly says, whosoever drink this one unworthily, what will happen? Read 1 Corinthians 11. 27, read brother. First Corinthians 11, 27 to 31, brother. Who, where forever, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord, unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But see? let a man examine. Uh, see, he shall be guilty of the blood and body of the Lord. So, dear brethren, we should never be guilty. Guilty means what? Eh? Even after knowing what is the truth, doing the same wrong thing, it is like, you see, being guilty before the Lord. This is actually unscriptural. You see? And uh, if, uh, therefore it says, let everybody examine himself. So, we need to question ourselves whether we're doing it as per the Bible or not. And continue with the next. Huh? But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup, for that for he ha that eaten and drink on unworthily eaten and drink dimension dimen to, to himself. himself. You see, if you drink it, eat it unworthily, you are uh, uh, condemning yourself. Eating damnation for himself. You see, not discerning that this is the Lord's body. That this is remembering his death. Therefore, many people in the church are there. Who are they? They are weak, they are sick. So many are asleep spiritually. They don't have any spiritual senses. Therefore, we should judge ourselves and do it in a proper way. Therefore, dear brother, this has to be taken nearly once. Just imagine. Our Lord never requested anything to do for himself. Isn't it? A dying man, you see, before his death, he requested just one small thing from us. Please, do this in remembrance of me. Even today, you know, so many people tell, what do they tell? A dying man's last request should always be considered. You know, Kasab, uh, the last request was that he wanted to eat biryani. His request was granted to him. I'm just giving you an example. Our Lord was so holy, who poured out his blood for us, who purchased us, who has seen us. His last request also, can't we do it in a proper way? Then what type of Christians are we doing? We need to be humble, surrender to the Lord. Obey his commandment. Follow his teachings. Surrender to the Lord. Bible says Jesus is the same yesterday, today, or tomorrow. Are we like that? Can the Lord say that we are the same Christians? We are the Christians who obey the word of God yesterday, obey the word of God today, obey the word of God tomorrow. If can't, how can we tell the Lord that you trust us, Lord? You have faith on us. If we come to heaven, we'll be living a life which is pleasing to God. If you are not trying to live a life which is pleasing to him now itself. Let us read last verse, First Corinthians 10. First Corinthians 10, 21. If somebody tells, no brother, he will really take 
monthly ones, weekly ones, daily ones means read this scripture. Uh. 1021, brother. Uh, 1 Corinthians 1021. Mm. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. Okay. There are two tables. There are two cups. Remember, unknowingly, we were drinking the cup of the what? Devil. what? Yes. Unknowingly, we were doing that. But now, we have come to know the truth. Unknowingly, we were partaking of the devil's table day there. But now we have come to know. So let us obey the Lord's word and uh, be humble to him and uh, surrender ourselves to him. Okay? So you go through the uh, recording. I'll send you the notes also. So any doubts, any questions you have, you can ask me.